What is a recall? Well, as I recall, a recall is whenever a company retracts a product that proves to be hazardous or does not perform the job it was meant to do. But wait, you say? If a product doesn't work or is harmful, why is it out there at all? Well, good thinking, thinker. It all comes down to the simple now or later balance. This is you. And say you're sick and go to the doctor's, and he says, There's a cure, but it isn't available to you yet. Well, then you're gonna get mad. On a slightly more serious note, there are thousands that might benefit from a cure if it was available. It could save so many lives, right? Well, maybe. It sure looks like a plus for the now side. But consider the opposite. This is you. You're feeling a little off and go for a simple fix-up at the doctor, and he tells you about this new technology that will make you feel amazing. But it actually doesn't. It makes you feel much, much worse. It gets infected. It makes you sleepy. And have purple fuzzy toenails. That's a problem you didn't have before, and so now you're mad. Jeez, why you always gotta be so mad, bro? Let's not even go to that serious side. I'm sure you can think of much worse things than having fuzzy purple toenails. So where does that put us? A nice little minus on the now side. Just kidding. Not knowing what a product will do to you is a huge minus. So what could be worth that risk to the consumers? Well, it's all about the money, honey. Businessman A is smart and dedicated to doing the right thing for his company. He sees that sales are a plus in the books, and research and development is a minus. To keep his profits at a maximum, he needs more sales, less R&D. It makes sense. So what does he care if there's a little fudge in the data? He's also got this thing called a boss who makes him nervous, and all he wants to do is the right thing for the company. However, he should really be concerned about the quality and safety of products, because he himself is a consumer too. What if the product is no good? Well, when it comes down to the time to point fingers, it's usually at that scientist from R&D. That scientist knows about this thing called the precautionary principle that basically says if you're not really sure about your science, don't call it a fact yet. But it is incredibly vague and more of a philosophy guideline for scientists than a law or a rule. The scientist might even want to do more research. Presumably, he likes doing that kind of thing if he's made his career in science. But he also has these boss things and the now and later balance and a finite number of grant money. How can he stand up for science in a world that undervalues research? In fact, this scenario should make the science community at large really angry because it gives science a bad name in the eyes of many every time there's a recall. It's far more common than even I want to admit because, hey, scientists gotta eat somehow. Really, profit-driven research is this nasty, twisted, vile, cruel version of the pure stuff that searches for knowledge. Okay, that's a tad exaggerated, but it's certainly backwards as a researcher starts with a product in mind and tries to work backward to make it as cheaply as possible, rather than making discoveries and knowing what stuff does and then working on applications once the tests are done. What I'm getting at is a very serious matter. We need to protect people from underdeveloped products that can be hazardous. We shouldn't find out what a product does after people get hurt. We need to stop science from being so influenced by money that people feel that it cannot be trusted. We need to cut out the loopholes that allow people to cut corners in research and realize that people's well-being is worth the extra cost of an R&D department. After all, it's a reckless world out there, and we could all benefit from a little bit more precaution.